Hi, I'm Chris Matson, the faculty director of the Design Exploration Research Group at Brigham Young University. I'm here with Braden Hancock, who is a Barry M. Goldwater Scholar and also the recipient of the Kenneth Andrew Rowe ASME Scholarship. And he's going to take us through a new method, a new multi-objective optimization method that we recently published in Structural and Multidisciplinary Optimization. Braden. Most design scenarios have multiple objectives that conflict with each other. In these scenarios, the designer often explores the design objective space of the problem, like the one shown here in blue, where each point represents unique design. Generally, designers are especially interested in Pareto solutions, also known as non-dominated solutions, because by definition, no other solution is better than them in all objectives. A Pareto set of solutions is ideally small enough for the designer to handle cognitively, but still large enough to represent the unique features of the design space. One type of set that meets these criteria is called a smart Pareto set. Smart Pareto sets contain more solutions in regions of high trade-off where multiple objectives are changing rapidly, and fewer solutions in relatively flat regions where perhaps only one objective is changing significantly. The traditional approach for obtaining smart Pareto sets begins by generating a well-distributed set of Pareto solutions with a high density using the normal constraint method. Then a smart Pareto filter is applied, which removes all solutions that do not provide sufficiently unique information to merit a place in the minimal set that will be presented to the user. This filtering is done by defining a region of practically insignificant trade-off, also known as the PIT region, which is placed around each point in the set, removing all remaining points that lie within it. The inherent weakness of this approach is that significant computational effort is wasted generating Pareto points that the user will never see. We are pleased to introduce the Smart Normal Constraint Method, which is capable of directly generating a Smart Pareto set. This results in very significant decreases in computational cost, reducing the required number of function calls by multiple orders of magnitude in some cases. To make gener direct generation possible, we must define our PIT region in a new way. We have created a scalar measurement known as the Smart Distance between points, which takes into account both Euclidean distance and direction so that points and directions in high trade-off can be treated differently than points and directions of low trade-off. Instead of defining our PIT region as a certain area bounded by multiple lines with differing equations, we define it as the region including all points with a smart distance less than or equal to 1 from the center point. This makes a shape called a Lemay curve in 2D or a hyper Lemay curve in ND. The smart distance is calculated using user-provided values for A sub I, which represent the length of the arms of the Lemay curve for each objective direction, and p, which corresponds to the tightness of the curve. Smart distance, s, is simply equal to the p-norm of the diagonal matrix A and the Euclidean distance between points, d, where A takes as input the user-provided values of lowercase a for each objective. The equation for calculating a p-norm is given here as equation 3 for reference. Here are four example points and their respective smart distances to the center point. Defining the PIT region in this way, with a scalar value rather than a bounded region, allows an algorithm to identify not just whether or not a new point is smart, but also to what extent it is or isn't smart. This ability to simply quantify trade-off between points enables the SNC method to more intelligently, and therefore efficiently, search a design space for a smart Pareto set. The smart normal constraint method works in n dimensions, but for simplicity's sake, here are the steps of the SNC method shown for a simple two-dimensional problem. In step one, we find anchor points which are the extreme values of the Pareto frontier for each objective. This is done by optimizing with respect to just one objective at a time. In step two, we determine how to connect our known Pareto points to form a linear approximation of the Pareto frontier. In 2D, each Pareto point simply connects to its neighbors on either side. In higher dimensions, we find the Delaunay triangulation of our Pareto points to divide up the approximation surface. That can be done using the built-in function Delaunay n in MATLAB. Next, the approximation lines are made, and these lines are discretized into evenly spaced approximation points. Now, instead of performing a single objective optimization for every one of these points, like we would do in the traditional approach using the normal constraint method, we use our smart distance formula to calculate which region of our approximated Pareto frontier has the greatest likelihood of yielding a new point that is not in any existing PIT regions. We calculate the smart distances of every approximation point to the known Pareto points and select the one with the maximum smart distance value from the nearest known Pareto point. Through that point, we construct a linear constraint that is normal to the line connecting the anchor points. This limits the feasible design space to a particular region, and now a single objective optimization with respect to mu2 results in a new smart Pareto point in that region. Steps 2 through 6 then repeat. New connectivity is found, 
new approximation lines and points are created, smart distances are calculated once more, and another single objective optimization is performed. When there is no more room on the Pareto frontier for new smart Pareto points, the algorithm ends and the smart Pareto set is presented to the designer. The resulting set may look something like this. It required nine single objective optimizations, one for each solution. To produce this same set using the traditional approach with a smart Pareto filter, we would have had to create a well-distributed set where all points were as close as the two closest points in this final set. That means that we would have had to perform not nine, but 20 single objective optimizations. Now that you've seen a very basic case, we'll compare the performance of the traditional approach and the smart normal constraint approach on some complex example problems from the literature. For each of these examples, a smart Pareto set was generated by the smart normal constraint method. Then, using the necessary parameters to produce that same set, the normal constraint method was applied with a smart Pareto filter. With nearly identical resulting sets, the two methods can be easily compared for efficiency based on the number of function calls performed. Here are the results of both approaches on all three example problems. By searching the design space intelligently instead of searching it with equal resolution in all regions, the SNC method was able to dramatically decrease the number of function calls. And we can see that as the complexity of the problem increases, the advantages of using the SNC method increase as well, up to a 99% decrease in total function calls for our five objective problem. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to work at the Air Force Research Laboratory where I was involved with an optimization problem for a turbine airfoil with 17 variables and five objectives. Since each function call required six hours of CFD analysis, finding a smart Pareto set was out of the question. If our five objective test problem is any indicator, that could have taken three and a half years to complete. We were forced to use a much less thorough optimization approach instead. But with the increased computational efficiency of the smart normal constraint method, we could likely perform those same calculations now in just 10 days. To summarize what you've seen in this video, first, the smart normal constraint method is the first algorithm capable of directly generating smart Pareto sets of solutions in n dimensions. Second, this method is enabled through the use of an iteratively updated approximation of the Pareto frontier and the creation of a novel scalar measurement for the smart distance between points. And third, thanks to its ability to more intelligently search the design space, the smart normal constraint method results in significantly fewer function calls than the traditional approach in nearly all cases, by as much as 99% in our example problems. We hope you enjoyed this demonstration. For more information on the smart normal constraint method, see our publication in the Journal of Structural and Multidisciplinary Optimization. You can also visit the website of the Design Exploration Research Group or send us an email.